Welcome to the final best team for Pokemon Gold, Silver, and Crystal for Alligator Edition. I can't believe how fast this series is going and the amount of love you guys are still showing for it even after two years. Last time we left off with Meganium as our starter. Today, as you all know, we're covering for Alligator. This starter was heavily debated against when the best starter for GSC was being made. Typhlosion and for Alligator are easily the best two in Johto, but Fire just does a tad better in Johto than Water does. But today, we can finally make a best team revolving around this sort of Pokemon being Totodile. Whether you are new, or veterans to the best team series. For every team video I make, I always lay down the ground rules and requirements I look for for when making one of these teams. When making a best team, I look for the best possible team of six Pokemon revolving around that said starter, ensuring that it does well against all the gym leaders, elite four members, rival, evil team leaders, and in the Johto games, red as well. I also provide movesets for each of these six Pokemon. I don't use egg moves nor post-game tutor moves because those are impossible to get during the main story. Egg moves you can, but I just don't like to use egg moves because it's a pain in the butt. I do have ever use TM moves as long as they are obtainable pre-post game. Note that this team is not viable in Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver. I get asked this a lot, the answer is no. Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver got rid of the physical special split. The Generation 2 games all had the physical special split, meaning that Pokemon and moves are totally different. Okay, that pretty much sums up what makes the best team. Without any further ado, let's begin. As I mentioned earlier, for Alligator was very close to becoming the best starter for the Generation 2 games, but Fire Pokemon are just more useful in Johto than Water Pokemon are. Regardless of for Alligator not being the best Water starter though, it is still a very good Pokemon nonetheless, even with the physical special split being intact. Water moves are all special in Generation 2, but for Alligator still has 79 base special attack, which isn't all that bad to be honest. It can still hit decently hard to some degree, and to be honest, it still does better than Meganium, even though I feel ashamed to say that because Meganium is adorable and I like it a lot. For Alligator still does very well in a Johto playthrough, it even gets Ice Punch as a way of dealing with those Grass types and Dragon types. To sum it up, is it a good starter? Absolutely, I love it. Use for Alligator. A moveset for for Alligator is fairly simple, nothing too complex. Starting off with Stab, we have Surf, then for coverage, Ice Punch, Bite, and Dig. You can also choose from other moves being Slash and Hydro Pump. Though for me, I prefer Bite over Slash because of Morty's Gym and a variety of second types. Surf is better because of accuracy, and I prefer accuracy over power, but in the end, it's your choice. Surf is obtainable from the guy in the Kimono Dance Theater once you defeat the Kimono Girls. Ice Punch can be bought from the Goldenrod Department Store immediately when you get to Goldenrod City. Bite is a level up move, and Dig can be found in National Park. With all these moves for Alligator Dis well against Morty, Jasmine's team, Price's Pillow Swine, Claire's Dragonair, Silver's Golbat line and Magneton line, Brock's Rhyhorn, Graveler, Onyx, Sabrina's team, Blaine's team, Blue's Rhydon, Alakazam, and Arcanine, Will's team, Kogus Crobat, Bruno's Onyx, Karen's Vileplume, Murkrow, Houndoom, and Gengar, Lance's Dragons and Charizard, and the Rocket Executives, Houndoom and Red's Charizard. For our second member of the team, we have Fira returning. As I mentioned last time, I really wanted Fira on the best team instead of Pidgeot, so you can go ahead and use it on any of our teams for Gold, Silver, and Crystal. It's a much better flyer. If you want, you could even use Skarmory on the team instead, as it's super powerful. However, you're going to have to wait until late game if you want to get it. So for the sake of simplicity, this is going to focus on using Fira. You can get a Spiro pretty early on Route 46, so finding it is pretty much no problem. As for the moveset, it's going to be the same as last time in the best team for Meganium. Having Drill Peck, Return, Fly, and agility or swift. Drill Peck is learned at level 40, so just use Peck until then. You can get the return TM at the Goldenrod department store on a Sunday from a lady if your lead Pokemon has high happiness. Fly is given to you by Chuck's wife after you beat him, and Swift is found in Union Cave, so you can use that until you get return, or you can even use agility if you want that. Swift never misses, and is solid for attacking. And agility is great for making Fero very fast by raising its speed by two stages. Fero isn't the strongest, but it can put in some serious work against many different trainers and their Pokemon, like Bugsy's team, Chuck's team, the Rocket Executive's Vileplume, Will's Executor, Koga's Bug Types, Bruno's Fighting Types, Karen's Vileplume, Erica's Team, Janine's Eridos and Venomoth, Blue's Executor, and Red's Venusaur. So we have a newcomer to the best team series. Everyone welcome Bellossum. Oddish can be found in the Elix Forest right after you take on Bugsy in all three games, Gold, Silver, and Crystal. I know a lot of people are going to be thinking, oh, Bellossum is super slow, why are you putting it on the team, yada yada yada. Well, the reason is because it's one of the best grass types you can use in Pokemon Gold, Silver, and Crystal. I feel it outclasses Victory Bell because of one reason. It gets more powerful grass type attacks, one being Petal Dance. Victory Bell's only good grass attack is Razor Leaf, pretty much. And you don't get moves like Giga Drain until Kanto. So yeah, Belossum is better. And Ampharos, it's a great Pokemon and all, but you can't get it in Crystal, and it 
it's just really sad because Ampharos is actually very, very good. Now you could use Vile Plume too, but I don't want two poison types on the team. Yeah, we're getting another poison type later on. Blossom, though it is slow, still has a base special attack stat of 95 and it has a lot of status element attacks like Sleep Powder and Stun Spore. These attacks can be good for slowing down opponents. I also like Blossom's team because it's fun variety and I'm happy that we're able to use such a unique Pokemon on the team. I think you guys will enjoy it. I may even do a playthrough of this just because I can use Blossom. With Blossom's moveset, it's a little more diverse than other best team members because we hardly use any grass Pokemon anyways. The moveset is going to consist of Stun Spore, Sleep Powder, Petal Dance, and Sludge Bomb. Now Sludge Bomb may be physical in this game, but Blossom's attack stat is still 80, so in all honesty that's not bad. Blossom does well against Chuck's Polyrath, Price's team, just be careful, Brock's team, Misty's team, be careful of ice moves, Erica's team, Blue's Rhydon, Bruno's Onyx, Silver's Meganium, and Red's Blastoise. Our fourth member is returning veteran Alakazam. It missed the cut last time due to the need of our Slowbo's water typing, but that's obviously not an issue anymore with Feraligo being our starter. You can get Abra on Route 34. I know teleport can be pretty annoying, however it really isn't that bad. And if you truly don't want to deal with it, you can hold out until the Goldenrod game corner, just gamble away until you get 200 coins. Or you can even just buy it in cash. It'll be at level 10, so it shouldn't take too long to level up into Kadabra. Immediately after though, you can evolve it into Alakazam straight away. You just need a friend or second 3DS to trade. Alakazam fortunately has a very solid move pull, so for its moveset we'll be using Psychic, Shadow Ball, Thunder Punch, and Ice Punch. You don't learn Psychic until level 38, so just use Confusion until Psybeam at level 21, and then just replace it from there. Shadow Ball is given to you by Morty for beating him, and both Thunder Punch and Ice Punch can be bought at the Golden Round Department Store. The Alakazam line can do well against Morty as long as you're very careful. Chuck, Price's Seal and Dugong, Claire's Dragonair, Brock, just be wary of Omastar, Misty's team, Erica's team, Janine's team, Sabrina's team with Shadow Ball, Blue's Pidgeot, Alakazam, Rhydon, and Executor, Will's team, Koga's Bug Types, Bruno's team, Lance's team with the Elemental Punches, most of Silver's team, just watch out for Sneasel, the Rocket Executive's Poison Types, and Red's Espeon, Venusaur, Charizard, and Blastoise. Yeah, Alakazam can really tear through most of Kanto and Johto as you can see. The fifth member of our team is going to be a veteran once again, being Nidoking. You can obtain Nidoran on Route 35 right above Goldenrod City and then you can evolve it into Nidorina at level 16. After you evolve it, you may have to wait a while. The first Moonstone you get isn't until you get Surf. You can head east of New Bark Town towards Kanto, go on the Tojo Falls and then head to the left side of the cave. The Moonstone is right there. Nidoking, as I always say, is a purple dino monster Barney thing. It's great early game and late game and also gives you a fully evolved Pokemon by the time you get to the fourth badge. It's got one or two base attack, 85 special attack, and then 85 speed. These are actually halfway decent stats for a ground type Pokemon in this game. In my opinion, I think Nidoking is one of the best ones. The one thing that annoys me about Nidoking though is that you can't teach it dig. Other than that, enjoy its power once again. It's great. Now for Nidoking's moveset, we're going to mix it up a bit, mainly because Alakazam can make better use of Shadow Ball and the Elemental Punches. We have Earthquake, Thrash, Rock Smash, and Fire Punch. As usual, Earthquake isn't available until Victory Road, so just use Mud Slap until then. You get Mud Slap as a prize for defeating Falconer. Thrash is learned at level 23, and is just a really solid and powerful normal type attack. For Rock Smash, you get it from the man near Pseudo Widow after you get rid of it. I know it's not the strongest move in the world, but it's an accurate fighting move that can easily come in handy. It even has the chance to drop an opponent's defense by a couple stages. If you want to even make it more powerful, you can get the Block Belt from Wesley at the Lake of Rage, as long as it's on Wednesday. I think this combination is pretty solid, however, you can use Double Kick if you'd like. Lastly, we have Fire Punch, which is obtained at the Goldenrod Department Store. It's just nice to have more coverage for the big Grass, Steel, and Psychic types. With this move set, Nidoking does well against Whitney, Morty's team, Jasmine, Claire's Dragonair, Brock's Graveler, Rhyhorn, and Onyx, Lieutenant Surge's team, Erica's team, Janine's Weezing, Ariados, and Venomoth, Blaine's team, Blue's Rhydon, Executor, and Arcanine, Will's Executor, Koga's team, aside from Crobat, Bruno's Onyx, Karen's team, aside from Murkrow, Silver's Sneasel, Magneton, Gengar line, and Meganium, the Rocket Executive's Weezing lines, and the Houndoom line, and finally, Red Snorlax and Venusaur. Once again, a very powerful asset to the team, way to go King. welcome back. Coming into the last slot of our team for once, we have a variety of fire Pokemon to choose from, either being Magmar, Arcanine, or Ninetales. Some of you guys mentioned in the last best team that Arcanine and Ninetales should have been mentioned, well here you go. Magmar is once again the deciding choice for fire Pokemon in my opinion, but if you want to use either Vulpix or Growlithe depending on the game you have, go for it. I'm not going to get heavy into the movesets for them, but it's pretty much the basics of Flamethrower, or Flamewolf for Arcanine, Ninetales for Flamethrower, and if you want to you could even teach them both Iron Tail. The downside about Magmar too is you actually 
unfortunately can't get it in Pokemon Crystal until Mount Silver. However, you can get it from the Daycare Man in form of Magby. You can soft reset for a Magby and even potentially get a shiny one. Magmar I prefer though over Ninetales and Arcanine because it gets access to Thunder Punch and I feel it's just more versatile. So for moves on Magmar, I think it would be great with Flamethrower, Thunder Punch, Headbutt, and Confuse Ray. Flamethrower for obvious reasons, Thunder Punch for coverage, Headbutt because it's filler and it's fun to flinch, also because having normal attacks is not a bad thing, Confuse Ray because why not and confusing enemies comes in handy. With these moves, Magmar does well against Jasmine, Price's Pillow Swine, Will's Executor, Koga's Bug Types, Karen's Vile Plume, Silver's Meganium, Sneasel, and Magneton, the Executive's Vile Plume, Erica's Team, Janine's Bug Types, Blue's Executor, and Red's Venusaur. Also, Magby gets Fire Punch at level 19, so you can use that until you get Flamethrower. Well, that pretty much wraps up the best team for Johto series, Generation 2 Edition. Next up is Oras and Hoenn, and that will be coming out in a few weeks. I had a lot of fun going through Johto again and showing off all the Pokemon you could use. A lot of these Pokemon from the Johto series, I am aware they are repeats, but when making the best team, we need the best Pokemon for the job. I hope you guys do enjoy Blossom, though. It's one of my favorite grass types, and I think it will aid you well on your journey. What did you guys think of the team, though? Share your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, why not leave a like and subscribe to my channel for notifications on, that way you never miss an upload. If you want to support me further, consider following my my Twitch where I stream a lot of Pokemon content and Nintendo content like Shiny Hunting, Showdown Battles, Pokemon Mystery Engine Explorers of Sky Speedruns, Zelda, and even Fire Emblem. So if you guys could come down and support, I would love that a lot. Want to support me further further and gain cool perks? Check out my Patreon. Fly Jubilee, Dan Leone, and Lady Crimson did, and I wanted to thank them personally for going above and beyond. It means the world to me. I think I'm gonna wrap this up though. I'm Mr. Gumbreon, and I will see you in the future for more awesome Pokemon content.